Hello, we're doing it. Sorry, I need to double check myself in the lights. I see my texturizing spray in the lights and I can't see it in real life. And it's very distracting on camera. Anyway, today's the bridal tutorial that y'all have been requesting for a long time. Like, I think it's just one of those things that I'm like, am I really an authority on this? But I think that now that my channel has really taken on even more emphasis on color theory and technique, and you know, use of shadow and light, a bridal tutorial is a really great touch point for all those things because it's like taking everything to the most extreme, but also really subtle. So, okay, I need to preface this by saying when I do a bridal tutorial, like this is A, how I did my makeup for my wedding. So I'm like, everybody's different. <laughs> And for me, it was about making me look like a more emphasized version of me from a distance. So when you're being photographed, it's very much like when you draw something and it looks like it's very well shaded, you know, right here. This looks like the first lesson in drawing one in art school. Sorry, I just like had a coughing fit. You put it on the wall, you back away from it, and it loses all of its visual impact, all of its dimension. And so you realize that you have to go maybe a little further, maybe a lot further than you think in terms of establishing that dimension and really exaggerating it in order to make it appear realistic and believable from a distance because distance just kind of tends to like muddle things or wash them out. So I'm gonna be doing techniques that you don't usually see on my channel because it's all about how it's going to look photographed and how it's going to look as the finished product because I know most pieces of art, <laughs> most makeup looks look a little, a little unhinged if you like look at them when they're midway done, but this is going to look more extremely unhinged probably like midway through and you just kind of got to bear with it because it's more makeup than I wear on a daily basis and more mattification and things that I typically show on my channel and chances are it's a lot more work than most people want to put in on a daily basis on their, on their face. So. All that to say, I also went on my Instagram and I asked y'all for questions about weddings in general, about my wedding, and you know, anything else y'all wanted to know. But the final disclaimer here is, you know, this is just about how I look the most like myself from a distance or in photography, but like, if you feel the most like yourself with your eyebrows, you know, bleached or your uh, like blue eyeliner or like a really vampy lip or you know what I mean? Like a really strong black eyeliner, like a really strong like cat eye or something. Do that. Don't let me tell you or anyone tell you that there's like a way you have to look at your wedding in order for it to be a wedding look. You know, this is just the basics of how to establish a look that looks realistic, like I'm sitting here right in front of you, but like, you know, to the check cashing place around the corner. So it is a little draggy, but it's going to look totally believable and quote unquote, like normal on camera. Like, you know, if you're having professional photos taken from a distance and stuff like that. So yeah, all that said, let's go ahead and jump in. Okay. This is actually a really interesting question to kind of kick it off. So Tavia, who is actually, she owns one of my paintings. She did a commission with me. Would it be a mistake to have a big fancy glam wedding and wear super natural makeup? Okay, so this actually aims to answer that question. I'm gonna start with a primer here because I think that for the long wearingness of your makeup look, obviously, you know, you're probably just like not gonna wanna think about it. <laughs> You really want to make sure that this is something you include in your skin prep to make sure that like when you do it, it's lasting you all day. Most of the time I don't care about makeup looking worn in, but like this is where you want it to be kind of a mask. So I'm using the RMS Re-Evolve Radiance Locking Primer. I don't know whether that means that it's locking the radiance or whether it's radiant and it locks your makeup, but either way, I like it and it's a little bit tacky once it dries a little bit and I think that it works really well. It's kind of like the Hydro Grip from Milk except it doesn't make your makeup kind of look like it's hovering on top of the primer. It actually sinks in and like is moisturizing but it does give you that nice tacky layer. Use a little bit of that while I answer Tavi's question. So the main thing is, you know, whether or not you think natural in terms of like how you'd wear your makeup every day if you wear, you know, natural looking makeup every day, 
or natural and you want to look like your natural self in photos because if you wear just natural makeup at a very glam wedding it, like the way that I would typically do you know a makeup tutorial on my channel with something you know lightweight or whatever even like a semi-exaggerated eye look or wh whatever stuff that just you think of as everyday makeup if you do that and the rest of your wedding, all the styling, everything you're wearing, your hair, you know, every, everything that everybody's wearing is done in a very like glam, over the top, exaggerated way. The photographers, a lot of times when they're editing the photos, will turn up the contrast so that you see those crisp details in an even more indelible and like effective way. And what will happen is everything else will have the lovely crisp details and your face will get lost. So I think that it's kind of a trick answer to your question. It's like, yes, that would be a mistake, but if you're doing makeup kind of the way I'm about to show you, you, you can still look natural in photos, even though the makeup itself is not the natural way that you would feel comfortable doing your makeup on a daily basis. It's kind of why it's like, you know, worthy of a tutorial is because it's a very like, it's a very special occasion and it might not be the kind of makeup you're used to to doing. So you might want to practice it. All right. So the foundation that I'm going to use, I actually, I talked about how the RMS would be a good one because it does have a nice matte finish and it does wear all day. It's really nice. But Chanel does to me just the, the best, the best long wearing, the best in appearance, the best complexion products, at least for like my skin type. I have, you know, dry skin. Obviously there are lots of brands that make more long wearing things for combination and oily skin. A lot of people choose things like Fenty Pro Filter or Estee Lauder Double Wear or like any of those that are both satin finish but also made to control oil over the day. That's gonna be a better choice. Just make sure you get an excellent shade match. The last thing you want is to look at yourself in the photos and, and clock yourself, you know? <laughs> I'm not saying that like it is something that's completely uncorrectable in photos, but it is kind of a pain. So I am using the number one day Chanel. This is their Red Camellia Revitalizing Foundation. I have this in the shade B10 and it is an immaculate skin tone match for me. By the way, I meant to mention on my wedding day, I used the Luscious Cosmetics camera stick for my foundation. It's really hard to find it and to get a proper shade match in the US. You can get it on Amazon, but I'm not sure if it's coming directly from the company and I'm not sure how old they are. Obviously, you know, I, this was four years ago and it was something that I absolutely loved because it gave a really beautiful skin finish with really, really, really high coverage. I had, to, I had really bad skin at the time and really bad picking. And so it just did me an amazing amount of favors. If you come across that foundation and you feel confident in the shade match that you got, I'm pretty sure I used zero, a shade zero. It is, an unbelievably beautiful full coverage foundation for a wedding day. I didn't wear a self tanner to my wedding because I wanted everything to match. And I just knew that like I would probably screw it up. Like I could have gone and gotten a spray tan, I guess, but I just, you know, at the last minute I decided not to. It was really not like a moral decision or anything. It wasn't anything I kind of like agonized over. I was just like, it's just gonna be easier not to. And I was wearing like true white. So like true white against my skin. If I was wearing ivory like this, I might have I might have gone tan just for you know contrast sake. But I did end up wearing the Dior face and body on my actual like my chest and my back because a <laughs> things you have to think about at your wedding. Everybody staring at you. Are you the kind of person who flushes all the way up their neck? Because I am, and so I had to make sure that that was accounted for, that people weren't going to see giant red splotches all over my decollete while I was saying my vows. And I also wanted it on my back. My good friend Clover helped me out and she put it on my back because I was a runner at the time, like a very avid runner. And so I had like the most <laughs> specific sports bra tan on my back. And there, you know, I tried to like run in something different that summer and everything. I got married in October and I really tried. I tried to like not get that tan, but 
it happened. And there was just really no getting around it. And so she used that makeup to cover that for me too. So again, really important to have a, you know, really good shade match for those things. And so I do recommend doing something like the Dior Face and Body, which is going to have like such an extensive shade range, or even the MAC Face and Body. I think I might use the MAC Face and Body, like if I were to redo it now, because it is so like, waterproof, you know? It's just, it's really, really good and it actually looks like, you know, healthy hydrated skin. So I love this because even though it doesn't have, you know, full, 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 full coverage, gosh, it looks natural, you know? And it evens everything out in a way that is a little bit like, like blanking my features out, but it still gives me options and it doesn't give me cake face because it does have this like nice flexibility of, hydration to it. And, you know, I know that she does like dewy skin, but I know that Ingrid has combo skin that can get pretty oily, which is why she's aging like a goddess. <laughs> like she doesn't know what a wrinkle is. And she also can wear this, like she loves this foundation. And so I think that like the hydration does not necessarily, unless you get into like really extreme circumstances, doesn't like result in looking greasy over the day, you know? doesn't start to look really, really glowy and wild. I, I really do think that like, you know, Chanel, a lot of their products aren't my taste. I don't love their eyeshadows. I don't love their blushes, but their complexion products have just won me over time and time and time again. I really love almost every one of them that I've tried. So that was really like a pump, you know, just one full pump. I think that the big difference between this one is that you, can see a little bit more blur to it. That's the other reason I didn't want to go with the RMS is because it doesn't have any silicone in it. And so it, while it, they've managed to make it really long wearing, it's really beautiful, it still doesn't on its own blur pores very well. And so I feel like this does a little better job of it. This might not have silicones in it either. I don't, I don't know. But I am gonna take it down my neck just a little bit. I don't know, maybe the hairs on my face are just kind of catching it a little bit. You might dermaplane before you get married or something if you know you want your skin to look totally smooth and immaculate, but like don't decide to do something like that on the, the last hour, you know, and you've never done it before because it could really like break your skin out or irritate your skin. And that's the last thing you want is like a surprise like that at the last second. It's kind of all about doing things that you, you know, that are well worn, especially from like a color standpoint, like we're gonna be using some of the most like basic colors. Okay, so something that I'm getting a ton of questions about is regrets. Uh, wedding regrets in general. Do you have any makeup regrets from your wedding recommendations and regrets? Yeah, so <laughs> I've made no secret about this in the past, but my wedding was not the best day of my life. It certainly was not the best year of my life. I'm gonna go in with some color correction under my eyes just because I really think that like the opacity is something that really helps in photos. It's not something I really give a crap about on a day to day, but like I think that it can really help in photos. So this is the light to medium under eye brightener from Ulta. This is just the, you know, Ulta brand. And it's really, really nice. It's a lot like the Becca one, but it's not quite as dewy emollient, obviously, you know what I mean? It's it's in a stick, so it holds its own a little bit better. It's not quite so castor oily. And so that's gonna really help cancel that out underneath my eyes. So I would say my biggest regret, and this is gonna be like the most Aries thing you'll ever hear me say probably, but I, I should have been more of a bridezilla straight out of the gate. I talked to a lot of my friends, who had gotten married in the past and like, you know, their biggest advice, I guess, or their biggest like takeaway was that it's not, at the end of the day, your wedding isn't about you. I'm doing a little bit of that here too. I really like the appearance of that. That's just kind of not in my vocabulary. I don't really know like how people accept that. Look down the barrel of your wedding and say, it's not about me. Of course it's about me. It's my freaking wedding. You already had a wedding, you know what I mean? Speaking specifically to the family. I can't speak about everyone, obviously. This is a generalization, but something very odd happens to your family when you get engaged. They get weird. They just, oh boy, something comes out. And they all have like very odd opinions about how things need to be. And so, you know, we ended up with people kind of throwing money at the situation to get their way and stuff like that. And truth be told, 
I never wanted a wedding to begin with. I would have, oh my gosh, Curtis Connor and Jenna Allard got married. They just flew a bunch of their friends out to Italy and it was like a secret ceremony with just like their closest friends. That's what I would have wanted. I'm so jealous of what they did. And I think that if I did it today, I would do it completely differently, like differently stylistically and everything. But the biggest thing was I wish that I had put my foot down and genuinely like scared the hell out of everyone so that they feared me up front because instead I just got steamrolled and it made it so that like for the first time in my life at that time, like I couldn't sleep at night because I just hated that feeling that like I was bleeding money and it was all for something that I wasn't excited about and that didn't feel like it had anything to do with me. And it was just something that was like marching towards me and I couldn't wait for it to be over. And I'm really grateful for everybody who came, but I didn't even get to talk to any of them. If there's anything that I would recommend, screw the whole like idea of the, the reveal being on the wedding day. You know, you can take photos of that. Oh wow, you look so pretty, you know, the reveal. Like do it, but it doesn't have to be real, okay? Because what you should actually do or what I wish that I had done with my Dagum concealer. I'm gonna use the Kosas concealer in 1.5C and I'm going to use it to kind of like almost artificially brighten. We're going to be exaggerating contour and highlight, but in a way that doesn't use any variation in texture the way that I typically would. A lot of times I kind of like to manipulate texture to trick the eye without putting a bunch of makeup on, you know? It's like, how can I, how can I do this in the least amount of makeup? In this case, you kind of want to end up with everything matte and then you can editorialize a little glitter on your eyes or gloss or whatever, but the basics need to be matte because that's how things photograph the best. So do your photos ahead of time. Put your wedding dress on, put the tuxedo on, put your outfit on, whatever you're wearing, and do it all ahead of time so that you can actually enjoy this day that you spent all your money on. Some of my favorite photos are just the candids of us at like the dinner table and at, at like on the dance floor with our families and stuff. Like that's all I really wanted. I, you know, people came to my wedding that I didn't even get to talk to. And that stinks. There are people like, you know, that I was dying to see and I didn't even really like get to, to visit with them. And that sucks, that sucks. That's like not what I had in mind, you know? So that would be my biggest, probably my biggest regret besides just having a wedding at all. We're actually going on a trip though, tomorrow. And by the time this goes up, I'll already be back. It's a very, very quick trip. But we're flying down to North Carolina to see our friends who, one was my wedding planner and one, well, she was a day of planner. I didn't make anybody go through all that with me, but man, she did a really good job. She's like a professional event planner and just kind of did this on the side for us. And so uh, her husband is like one of my uh, husband's oldest friends and he officiated our wedding, which is just, it's really funny because we had like one of the most like non-religious ceremony. That was something I put my foot down about because you know, when I first started dating my husband, he was like, you know, my mom would want us to get married at church. And I was like, good for your mom. <laughs> no, I think I would get smoten <laughs> on the spot. <laughs> Someone would smite me. So uh, yeah, I mean, I wanted, we, we got married at a sculpture garden in Austin, Umlauf Sculpture Garden. And it was just so beautiful. And it was pretty pagan. You know, I had a lot of like crystals and stuff everywhere. And one of my bridesmaids is a witch, like a Wiccan, you know, just like that's her religion. And she would have officiated my wedding if she wasn't a bridesmaid because she's actually, you know, ordained. Um, but our friend got ordained so that he could do it and he's Jewish. And so it was just like, you know what? Come one, come all. Like, this is not, this is just not gonna be a religious thing. And then our reading was actually a poem that my husband picked out um, about uh, Winnie the Pooh fighting dragons. So that part was cool. <laughs> um, I also, you know, our music, I walked down the aisle to, well, I mean, it's, you know, Elvis. I can't help falling in love with you, but uh, you know, in my mind, it was the ladies and gentlemen, we are floating in space, you know? Let's see, I walked down the aisle to Ben Folds The Luckiest, and then our first dance, which I did not want to do at all, uh, but we did it to Barry White, 
my first, my last, my everything. And if you've watched Ally McBeal, you know why. It's just, it's just a great song and I've always wanted to, and it was just like, I had to like pack in those little inside jokes to myself because I, like the day just didn't feel like it belonged to me at all. And so that was how I did it. <laughs> Okay, so I'm making a game day, game time decision here. I'm calling it Audible <laughs> Sprouts. And uh, I'm gonna use this. This is the uh, Beautiful Skin Reading Concealer from Charlotte Tilbury, and it's so light, so light. But I'm gonna use it just like here because what I really wanna achieve is that like illusion of light. so that we don't have to go absolutely ham on contour to try to get that look, you know? It's like you kind of want to make sure that you also fill back in with lighter colors. Otherwise you are, especially after it's powdered and everything, you can end up roll like darker than your natural skin tone and that can go pretty cake face. It kind of calls you out. So like that's a pretty strong line. But don't you worry, I might even use that to just kind of highlight like there. This is again, I've already practiced this look, but this is this is game time here. Maybe here. And a little bit there. I don't want to do it under my eyes. I'm probably going to go in with the Danessa Myricks, uh, the Yummy Skin what is it called? The, the balm powder or whatever, because it's got the prettiest finish underneath the eyes and it's not quite this bright. So we are going to do a little bit more brightening underneath the eyes, but I want to make sure that I kind of leave room to be able to do that after I put like bronzer and stuff on. So it's giving the illusion that it's kind of coming towards you, which is a little much. It's a little much, you know, to do on a daily basis, but very, very effective on camera. I'm being really specific about, you know, my placement of things and not really buffing. It's just about like things being super, 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 super blended at the end of the day. And that's unpowdered or anything because we are actually going to do like cream contour and cream bronzer. Did you do your own makeup and what about the bridal party? So my bridal party are a bunch of goddesses and my friend Katie had gotten married a couple years earlier and had pretty much the same bridal party. So we rented the same house in the hill country for my bachelorette that we did for her wedding. We made flower crowns. This wasn't the question, but you know, we made flower crowns and made slime. My friend Jordan is just kind of an amazing like queen of organizing these things. Going in with the 106 here from BK and I'm not going to draw this on my face. I'll just end up with too much. I want some control and this is my trusty Oma double take sculpt and strobe duo stick in white pearl three and I'm just using the contour side the bridal party are some of my like you know oldest best friends and everything and we all come from either like being cosmetologists or being receptionists at like you know the barber shop that we all used to work at or it just, you know, some kind of beauty industry thing in, in most cases. And then there's like my friend Jordan who just is really into makeup. And so everyone really like wanted to do their own makeup. And so we just like listened to like nostalgic pop punk in my giant bathroom at the time. I don't know what we would do now, but in Texas I had a really big bathroom and we did our own makeup and it helped us kind of collaborate on like my hair and stuff because I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. And so I curled it and styled it and like put all the products in it. But then like, you know, we had multiple people kind of standing around me to help me like check it and stuff. And then when we got there, we pinned flowers in it from my bouquet, so. That was pretty cool. I wanted to do a flower crown and I think now I would because it just, my dress didn't end up going with it. My dress was like very uh, like classic, which was just not what I expected. I thought I was going to pick something really bohemian and I just didn't. It was just what ended up looking good on me. So I'm taking this contour, which I think is like a really effective shade for me. It's just this side of like believable, you know, it, it does actually accentuate, but it's not, you know, no makeup makeup kind of thing. And I'm, I'm just very softly blending that in 
not even necessarily like trying to create illusions. I'm more just kind of coloring in where I already have contour on my face. And I always say, if you want to know how to contour your face, right? You want to know like where to draw the shadows in. I'm going to turn this light off real quick. Find like overhead lighting. And do you see all the, the all the, the shadows that are cast? So this is my phone, right? I turn off my light. We have a shadow here. We have shadow here, 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 here. And then I do it on my hairline because <laughs> after like, you know what I mean? If I were to do this, it would probably do the same thing kind of thing. So it's just basically wherever, if you were in like the most exaggerated light where the shadows would already exist on your face. And that's kind of what you're coloring in so that it happens everywhere. So did you see, did you see how different my face looks with the lights off? That's why I said it's going to look a little crazy until the last second. <laughs> okay. All right. So now we're going to go in with bronzer and I am using a cream bronzer, but it's kind of a like, I don't know. It's, it's sort of a hybrid product. And normally I would say like, you know, we want to go in with very detailed brushes and be very specific about where we put things. But with bronzer for me, it's about ending up with very little of it spread very evenly in like a large area that makes it look almost like I had like two different shades of foundation that I was able to like blend to really capture the natural contours of my face rather than I put bronzer on. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of tapping this 105 brush, very large brush here from BK. And then I'm tapping it on the back of my hand so that I, it evens out the distribution of the product on the brush. And then I'm just going on that front and a little bit on the high point, but mostly the front of my cheek. And it's just going to give a blend more than anything. I do not want to look like I went to the tanning bed. You know, I just want to look healthy. And it also is going to add this nice warmth that it takes the contour and your complexion color and like makes a bridge between them that looks believable to the eye because your contour is cool and your bronzer is warm. And so it's going to accentuate the difference between a shadow and something coming towards you. Because what warmth comes towards you? That's just art math. Using a little on my neck, I'm gonna get a nice little blend going. Like that, things are looking a little less wild, a little less wild. Now we're gonna powder. And I just wanna caution y'all, because when I did this the first time, I used this powder. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish in one. So it's like, you know, not translucent. It's just technically like my skin tone. Oh boy. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. It darkened everything way, 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 way too much. So I'm actually going to use something that's like a translucent brightening powder. It's going to also kind of take all of this like tanness down a notch. So we're going to use the house labs because it makes you look like an angel. So I'm still going to go in with a small brush here because I do want precision. And this is just the translucent, but it is beautifully brightening. And maybe the Charlotte Tilbury, the actual like brightening powder would have worked really well. I'm not familiar enough with it yet. So I'm not sure that I, you know, have the experience with it to like recommend it. I know that this is going to kill it. I'm going to take something a little bit bigger, maybe a lot of it bigger and just gently apply a less concentrated amount kind of everywhere. This is so not me. <laughs> But the whole idea is that when you get a flash in your face, it's not going to reflect anything. Oh, also something really important for choosing your foundation for any look like this, where you are going to be under flash photography is uh, make sure it doesn't have any SPF in it, especially a mineral. Um, yeah, especially a mineral SPF because it's going to reflect and also don't bake, especially not with HD powder because it's going to flash. It's, it, uh, it's humiliating. So the answer is yes, I did my own makeup for my wedding and so did all of my bridesmaids. But I also used to do hair and I remember, you know, we would have like makeup artists come and, you know, do their makeup while we did their hair and stuff like that too. So it's whatever you're comfortable with. So there's the complexion, right? Like that's kind of where we're at on 
bronzer, contour, shadow, and light until, you know, we get to the very end where I'm probably going to like accentuate even more. I'm going to go in with the Janessa Myricks and I'm going to go in with some more like powder contour. But for now, we need to concentrate on like the colors that I'm going to choose for my eyes and for my cheeks and for my lips, right? And for me, for me to go like the most basic possible, I'm going to try and choose that neutral, my lips would better basic pink that I possibly can. Like the most basic straight down the middle, like neutral pink that I can, like as a lip color and then work backwards from that. Because if your cheeks are peach and your lips are pink and your eyes are also pink or like lavender or something, which any of those can work, but not all together. It's just going to look kind of clownish because there's, there's no way to make this much makeup look accidental. And so you really have to kind of work against the fact that you're wearing so darn much makeup by really simplifying the color palette and keeping it really native to your natural skin tone and undertones. So whatever it is that's like your, your perfect kind of my lips but better or neutral pink or beige or brown or whatever, let that be something that kind of iterates throughout the rest of your look, like your, your blush choices and your eye shadow choices. So for my lips, I'm going to go with like a, you know, a nice neutral pink, but I would just want to say like, this is the inspo for my eyes. This is the Wayne Goss Pearl palette, but I'm just so, I mean, I can't be mad at Wayne. I know he's doing the best that he can, but like, it's frustrating that this has been out of stock for like years now since it came out because it is the best bridal palette for my complexion. It's just so perfect. And I would love to be able to tell you, go pay $55, get yourself this pearl palette. And it's going to not only be a fantastic palette for, you know, all of your bridal eye looks or whatever, but it's going to be something that can be a mainstay in your collection forever but you can't get it. So we're going with the next best thing, the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes Palette, which is, you know, basically just twice as many shades. And I feel like while I don't love the formulas quite as much, and it's not necessarily designed specifically to be a bridal palette, I think it does a really good job for fair skin. There are obviously like nude and neutral palettes for a lot of different skin tones. I don't think that this would give the same effect on everybody. You know, I think that this is a very fair skin friendly palette. What did I use on my wedding day, you ask? Did you ask? I actually used the Urban Decay Born to Run palette. It has every color imaginable. It was such a good palette. I loved it so much. Also, my husband's from New Jersey and is absolutely obsessed with Bruce Springsteen. And so it felt like just felt like the right thing to do. Okay, I'm gonna prime my eyes. We're gonna do eyes first here. And I'm gonna prime them because we just kind of wanna do the most. You know, you wanna make sure you're kind of accounting for every possible extenuating circumstance. Like you're gonna be crying and you might reach up and touch your eyes. It might be sweaty or whatever, you know, and you wanna just make sure you got insurance. So I'm using the Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion. Gonna let that cook for a second. What wedding traditions do you love and hate? I'm just gonna start by saying the garter belt is creepy and gross. Unpopular opinion, but I think it's really, really weird and cringy. And I think that throwing the bouquet is cute if you wanna do it. I didn't do it, but I don't, I don't malign it. I think that it's, it's cute. So the way that I'm going to do my eyes here is I'm gonna start with a big brush and I'm gonna move to smaller brushes. I'm gonna start by just, you know, creating a nice wash of colors and then we'll work down into the details. But I am gonna brush my eyebrows out of the way first here. Okay, so in the spirit of doing the the most with the least, the, the, the most exaggeration with the least complicated colors, I am going to be playing with shadow and light here. So I'm going to start by setting everything with this nice warm white, warm, warm cream. Maybe not even setting everything. I'm just going to kind of set the, the creasy spots and then I'm going to go with this very boring kind of tawny K 
caramel color. And I'm going to use that to be a transition shade. I mean, this is just about as like 101 as it gets, but everybody's eye shape is different. And for me, one of the main things that I have to remember is to make sure that I take all of my like transition colors pretty high up, like past the crest of my brow bone here, because otherwise like it looks normal when I'm doing this, like it looks like a good kind of proportionate design. And then when I look forward, this actually is like a lot of what you see. And so this whole thing being like a white stripe is just gonna crunch my eyes down and make them look really small. So I wanna make sure that like I take it kind of over the crest, but I'm gonna do that with something that's a little bit more of like a, a pink. I think if you go too like brown and cool tones on your eyes when you have kind of a warm complexion and then you go pink everywhere else, it doesn't look bad, but it can look kind of like the 90s. Like in the 90s, they really focused on like brown and gray and like cream colors on the eyes and not so much like pinks and peaches and things like that. And so I feel like, you know, it can just kind of look a little bit reminiscent of that. And I am basically following my socket line, but not all the way in. I like to make my eyes look like they're farther apart and bigger. And if I were to like pull that all the way into the socket, it's gonna really accentuate how close together my eyes are. So I'm taking it out to this real estate out here, kind of establishing my shape because like my socket does actually naturally go up like this. And I just want to accentuate that visually. And this is a nice, you know, it's a nice warm color. And so like putting it kind of on this like outer area of the brow bone and like a thin layer, it, it looks really natural. As natural as something like this can. Snatural, you know? And I do have to confess something. <laughs> The whole reason that I decided to do this now was because I was sent a bunch of fake lashes, falsies, you know, from the new collaboration with BK Beauty, who, you know, makes all these brushes that I love, but they didn't send a lash glue. So I have all these lashes and I'm just going to try and like perch them <laughs> on my eyelashes the best that I can with, you know, whatever products I have because I don't own lash glue because why would I? You know what I mean? I haven't used lash glue probably since my wedding. By the way, my wedding was in 2018. Loving that, it's just kind of a nice basic outline for an eyeshadow look. And you might say, that's very pretty. I, you know, throw on like liner and lashes and you're done. This would be a great eyeshadow look if you were only just like right here in front of me. This is not gonna show up from a distance. This is gonna disappear at a distance. And we're gonna take it a lot more extreme than you think that you probably should. You kinda wanna push it and you probably wanna try it, practice it, and take some pictures from far away just to see because it'll probably need to be more extreme than you initially think. And it kinda takes a little bit of practice to get comfortable with it. I'm going to now take this like warm peach color and I'm gonna work that onto the lid and up here as well. Again, it's gonna kind of help acknowledge that space. You can always add like a highlight on top, but these mats are so sheer that like, you know, you're not kind of maxing out how much makeup is gonna stay, you know, stick. So that warms everything up a little bit. I'm gonna take some pink because like I said, we're kind of concentrating on making sure that everything's in the same sort of color values. And eyes are the place where you can play with the most colors, you know? But it's like you're almost trying to mimic the fact that you've got contour, bronzer, blush, contour, bronzer, blush on your eyes, you know? So it's, it's pretty boring at the end of the day. And you probably could use your contour, your bronzer, and your blush on your eyes too. So pink, pink, pink keep it soft, just kind of working that in sort of this outer area here. A nice, nice layer, kind of like once we've done all that contour, I wanna like fill in the gaps with pink. And the more that you kind of layer those, the softer and more like blended and you know, just soft focus it looks. And then I can take something, you know, like that lightest shade and very, very gently, very, very gently, <laughs> almost push my eyebrows out of the way to get that blend because I don't, I just don't want that stripe. It's something I'm really conscious of. And I did it on my inner corner as well, mainly just to like 
set it and get like the opacity so that I'm not looking at veins, right? All right, now we're going to move into a smaller brush. This is a 207 from BK. And now we're gonna move into some like deeper tones. Like I said, it's gonna be more extreme than you might be comfortable with like right away. And I'm gonna go right there in that corner, touch that corner, and we're gonna draw a more exaggerated socket outer V. I'm always trying to keep things like lifted, you know? So that might even be a little bit low. Like I might wanna like clean that up in a second. Working it a little bit kind of onto the edge of the lash line, accentuating again that outer V area. And this is not the deepest shade in the palette yet. We will get there, but this isn't it yet. Kind of a good rule of thumb is like once you get something on that's like a, you know, more placement oriented shade, you can then go back with like a fluffier brush and just soften, 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 soften. Like I didn't pick up any other shadow. We're just softening. Like you just want everything to look really, really blurred. I'm taking it a little bit underneath my eye as well because that's actually kind of a, a more of an aesthetic like comfort thing. My eyes are deep set and so I do think that it looks more natural on me to have a little bit of shadow underneath my eyes. So I will take like a little bit of that brown, that first brown that we used and go really close to the lash line. And what it does is it just kind of accentuates the fact that there is depth there. If you don't have that depth, and it looks weird on you when you do that, then don't do it. Like I don't wear mascara on my lower lashes for that reason, because I just don't think that like they show up enough in real life that putting mascara on them makes them look like more realistic, you know? They just, they just look odd and it just kind of like crowds my, my already small eyes. And then I'll actually take that pink and we'll just kind of use that to soften everything. It's very like sweet romantic color story. And I, I have made the executive decision that that's too low. Right there, there we go, that's better. And then we have a couple of, I, I think more like editorial decisions here, but at the same time, this is just how I would achieve even more exaggeration for this eye look. I'm gonna start with this one, the deepest brown, which is still not that deep, it's just deep for me. And even accentuate the depth of that placement even more. And you could even go with like a pencil brush or something, but I like this one because it's still got enough fluff to it that I can blend with it without changing brushes. See, you just kind of push it like that. And you're like, khaki, things are getting a little bit dramatic. I promise you, you won't even notice it at the end. So then we went, Take our other guy and blendy blendy. And we have so far only used matte shades to achieve this. Now I'm going to take my bedroom eyes brown, which is like, you know, one of my most comfort zone kind of colors. And I'm going to just tap it on the outer edge, not a ton of it, but like on the outer half. And it gives kind of a romantic like heavy lid look, you know? It's just very like glamorous without being too much more than that. And then, I mean, you know, take your pick of any of these beautiful ethereal shimmers. I'm just gonna go with the, you know, most neutral one here for the sake of demonstration. And I'm taking my finger and just blending that across the lid into the bedroom eyes shade. because this is no longer about necessarily like just building an illusion. It's now more about like having a bridal look and it being special, you know? It's like, okay, a little shimmer on the eyes. Like I would feel incomplete without that on my wedding day. But do you see how the contrast is so exaggerated now between the outer corner and the lid and the inner corner? And now that I've done that, I actually noticed that like, you know, we can build a little bit more of like the medium brown out here to make this look more blended. You know, that's all I'm gonna do, like that. And that's just this 
again, the second lightest, the second darkest. But kind of no-nos would be probably, you know, if you're going for an illusion, I'm not telling you how to live your life, but if you're, if you're going for an actual illusion, you don't want to put something shimmery in your crease because it's gonna kill the illusion. It's gonna reflect light and it's gonna really like not look like a shadow anymore. It's just art math. And I also wouldn't do anything like a dark waterline unless you're having yourself a rock and roll wedding. And in which case, go off. Okay, for brows, I want to make sure that they look natural but natural. So we're going to still draw them in and, you know, do, do the most, the most steps. So I'm using my Make Blade line here. I mean, you really want them to be kind of opaque from afar because your brows really like frame your face. And most of the time people are not going to be judging whether your eyebrows looked Defined. The main thing is the pictures that you're looking at 20 years from now, do you have eyebrows? Because that's something that I look back on my like senior portraits and I'm like, I did not have eyebrows. <laughs> I regret that. I am being pretty careful to just follow my natural brow, but I do want to like still have the lifted illusion. So I might take a couple of liberties. I know it's a lot, but this is the day. This is the day where it's gonna be a lot. I left out the very roots of the front of my brows because I do want those to kind of gradually fade in. And I think that like the brow mousse is gonna do a good enough job. Yes, I wore my plugs on my wedding day, which is funny. I like didn't even really think about it. I think I just wore like rose gold or rose quartz ones maybe. <laughs> if you got a chance to redo the wedding, what would you change? everything. <laughs> like I said, I would take all of our pictures ahead of time. I'm going to go in now with this eyeliner, by the way, while I talk about this. This is the Victoria Beckham Satin Cajal Eyeliner in Ash. It's gray and it's going to do an amazing job for this because it's very impactful visually, but it's soft. It's just, I love it so much. I love it so much. I love it so much. And I'm going to do something that's, you know, yes, it's going to make my lashes look thicker, but it's also going to be kind of blended and it's also, for all intents and purposes, going to kind of disappear behind false lashes and mascara. And so you can take a little, a little bit more liberties. So I think that I would have a much smaller ceremony, not invite as many people. Not that I would like, can think of anybody in particular I would uninvite. I just would like to have something that was like entirely different in nature like destination, you know, Italy. And like, I would wear something different. I liked my dress, but I really just felt like the whole thing was about getting it done more than it was about really getting the chance to like think about how I wanted things to be. Now that I've had the chance to, and also I really feel like obviously it's been like four years, I just have a much stronger visual identity than I did then. And I don't know if any of y'all have ever been to a New Jersey wedding, but they're very specific and I knew I didn't want that, but it was kind of hard to wrestle that out of the hands of some of the people who were helping us with the wedding because they just had ideas about like how things were supposed to be. And I'm just like, it's not, we got married in Austin, you know? And I also didn't want to spend a hundred thousand dollars on a wedding, which is a lot of times what's like a completely normal amount of money to spend on a wedding in New Jersey, like to each their own. But like, I didn't want a wedding in the first place. I certainly didn't want to go into debt over it. So yeah, it would have been smaller. It would have been somewhere else. It would have been something that I enjoyed. I would have been able to see my friends and I would have told everybody to butt out, honestly. <laughs> Except for like my, my wedding planner. So, choosing a blush for something like this can be kind of hard because you want it to be so natural. And for the life of me, I don't know what I've done with Flirtatious. And I know that that is like blasphemy here on my channel. I need to find it because in all of my organization, I have lost track of her, but I have Nude Venus, Divine Rose, and Nymphette here. So I think that we'll be able to get the job done. Probably mostly with Divine Rose. I think Divine Rose is like, honestly, like the inspo color anchor of this entire look. I'm gonna take something kind of medium sized. We're gonna use the, okay, the 104 from BK. And 
The beauty of these is the original blush without caution is that you can really blush without caution. These Pat McGrath blushes go on so sheerly. They really, I mean, they lend themselves so well to a bridal look because they just, I mean, they look, look at that. It just looks airbrushed. So you can take your time, you know? You don't feel like, uh-oh, I have to start over because it's a lot of work to have to start over from. I'm actually gonna take a little bit of that on something fliffy and like use it to really blend the lines. The reason that I'm having that harsh line right there is because I haven't tweezed my eyebrows in a minute. So, you know, make sure that you're doing all that maintenance and stuff before you put your makeup on on your wedding day. But I didn't, cause it's not really my wedding day. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I could put this stuff on forever. But then I do typically want like a little bit of a pop doesn't have to be a wild pop, you know, but I do want more than one color there. This might be the one that's uh, Nymphette. Let's look at that versus Nude Venus. Ooh, I think it's Nude Venus. Cause it's got a tiny bit of like an apricot thing to it that like is not gonna like take over as the local color, but it's just gonna add some dimension to my cheeks. It's gonna really wake the look up. Don't wanna do too much cause you don't want this to go peach. But I feel like that kind of naturally enhanced my skin tone. Now comes cleanup time, okay? And this is gonna be something that's like kind of slow going because you don't wanna do too much. This is the 109 from BK. It's just like this itty bitty little brush. And I'm gonna very, very carefully, see how that brightens? Look at, look at how bright that is. And it really is just like this all in one complexion corrector where it looks like you have put on all three. You've already put on your concealer, your powder, and your setting spray on top of it, but it's all one product. I'm using that to just kind of highlight on the top of my nose, clean up. I'm gonna put a little more blush just so that it doesn't look like I have, you know, big walls there. Now I'm gonna go in with some brow gel. This is tinted brow gel, and it's gonna help kind of fill things in and also put them where they belong. And it's your choice if you wanna have kind of dramatic editorial brows or if you want them to just be in their natural shape. I'm gonna kinda of go somewhere in between. But you see what I was talking about? How like the mousse defines those little roots at the very front of my brows. And so I didn't need to pencil that in. Gonna let that chill for a second. And I would typically for something like this, I would curl my lashes. <laughs> But I'm like afraid to do that because I'm also going to try and wedge lashes onto my actual eyeballs. So I guess you kind of try and curl them together. You see how inexperienced I am at actual fake eyelashes. I have a brand new tube of brown mascara here from Thrive. We'll see if the brown is like enough impact because, you know, on your wedding day, you probably want to go for a contrast, but I think it's going to be fine. Ooh, I love brown. I love brown mascara, just in my regular everyday life. I just stumbled on this in my stash. I was like, oh my God, it's brand new in the box. I do recommend using a tubing mascara or a waterproof mascara on your wedding day for, you know, obvious reasons. I think a tubing mascara is the best because it comes off really easily, like when you do decide to wash your face, because the last thing you want to do is just be sitting there like, you know, clawing your face off after your wedding. But, it's probably not, even if you have like sweaty eyes, it's not gonna come off during your actual wedding day because you're wearing so much powder. Also, for me especially, like I love a nice fluttery lash, I do, but if you are wearing like eyelash extensions, fake eyelashes, or just a whole buttload of mascara, you want to use it to make the illusion that like your eyelashes are like, you know, fluttering outwards so that, you know, you get more effect of the actual eye look because if you just do them forwards, they're going to be foreshortened in photos. They're just gonna, they're gonna disappear, so. All right, we're going to define, we're gonna define the relationship. We're gonna define my eyebrows here. This is my Kamiko Brow Sensei. It's such an essential step in my routine for just making them look natural and finished. I do like a shiny brow. It's not super, super shiny, but it just looks, it looks a lot more like hair, you know, instead of like a weird matte crayon. 
This is actually a really good kind of teaching moment. So when you, the other reason that I recommend using a tubing mascara is because it is the easiest to clean off of your face if you get it somewhere. So you just let it dry completely. You take a nice spoolie and you yeah, just do that and it comes right off. I think we'll do a little bit of contour. I'm gonna, I'm sorry, I'm going to use my Natasha Denona one. I'm not sure if this like exists anymore or if it's going to exist in the future, but this is one of the best ones. The uh, Film Star Bronze and Glow is also really nice. The Kaleidos ones are really nice. This just happens to be my favorite and just makes all the difference, right? Even though we did a cream contour, I still think that this helps, especially because it's matte, you know, it's gonna help with that extra illusion of shadow going into your hairline. You can't really get a cream into your hairline as effectively as you can a powder. And I think that contour is one of those things that's like, it's a very intuitive last step. It's like something that you do wanna have visual control over as one of your last steps. You also wanna double check yourself, do your little like, you know, scrunched up double chin situation. Take your complexion brush, make sure everything's really, really blended. Cause you don't wanna get like, caught with a stripe, you know? Also make sure that your contour is kind of pulled onto your ears. And I do have a little blemish right there on the top of my nose. And I'm gonna take my finger in the Danessa Myricks and just camouflage that a little bit. Won't show up in pictures, but it'll make me feel better. Okay, so I'm gonna give this a spritz real quick and then we'll do the lips. I'm gonna use the Conceal and Define Infinite Mattifying Longwear Makeup Fixing Spray from Makeup Revolution. Amanda turned me on to this, but if it were actually my wedding day, I would pull out the Hourglass $48. It's probably more than that now with inflation, but their setting mist is incredible. It turns your makeup into this like flexible, glycerin mess. I'm telling you, it moves with your face and then it like self recovers. It's, it's incredible. Oh, right. We were gonna try and perch some fake lashes on. <laughs> Hold please. I think I'm gonna try using these martini lashes cause they have, they're just an outer lash. I, I'll be honest, I wish they looked a little more real. I wore Thrive ones at my wedding. These are kind of, they don't have like a natural kind of make taper to them. They just, they look really fake, but nobody's gonna see that up close, so. Thrive does have a really, really good lash glue. I just don't happen to have any on hand. So I'm just kind of placing them using a little mascara. Obviously this is not what you'd want to do on your wedding day. Eyelashes can smell fear, so believe in yourself. so different. That one just looks kind of whack. This is how it's gonna be, I guess. And this is a great demonstration of how not to do false lashes. <laughs> what will eventually happen is that they will look a lot more normal in person. That's the whole point. <laughs> but, you know, I don't have lash glue and I clearly am like having a lot of issues here. So I'm going to kind of touch my lashes back up here and we're just gonna go with the real thing. It is what it is. And it's a demonstration of calling an audible on your wedding day. So we have lots of options here as far as lip colors. My main advice is to go with something that's inside your comfort zone, right? I think that if you're looking for something like a formula that you wanna like find your ideal shade in, if you want a creamy matte, like something that's like a soft matte, these Rare Beauty Kind Words lipsticks, they have matching lip liners and they are in like the most beautiful range of pinky, peachy, neutral, kind of nude colors for every skin tone. I'm not gonna be using one today because I'm not, I don't wanna go for a matte lip, but for some people that is it, you know what I mean? Like that's just like how they feel the most comfortable and I really think that like it looks incredible and natural in a lot of people. For me though, it, I am more of like a, you know, slightly creamier lip. What I wore to my actual wedding day, 
was Nuit et Joux, one of the first influenced purchases that I ever made off of YouTube. And it was influenced by none other than Miss Lisa Eldridge. And I remember watching her use it on a model and I was like, that's my ideal nude lip in. By God, it was. And I, I think I wore it with the now defunct Toffee to Be L'Oreal lip liner, which is the lip liner shade that is uh, the khaki lip liner is based on. So anyway, I also have here Velvet Fawn. This would be another one that's like an excellent, excellent shade for me, but there's something about, this is from Lisa Eldridge, there's something about a matte formula that does kind of look darker because it absorbs light on the finish. And for someone as fair as I am, it's gonna look vampy almost no matter what. So I want to go with something that is going to have a nice creamy finish to it. And my kind of like go-to formulas, one now would be the Bobbi Brown Crushed Lip Color. This just comes in the most gorgeous range of like shades that look good on skin. You know, like you can probably find one or two your lips but better colors in this range. They're just these, this wonderful kind of like perfect level of pigmentation. This is the shade Buff and it's a little pink even, but oh, what a good wedding shade. I also have Pink Opal from LH Cosmetics. Another one that's really shiny and gorgeous and it actually has a little bit more of that like divine rose, you know, hint of coolness to it. And I have the Majestic in Dusty Pink, which has more pigment to it. It's a little bit more matte. And then there's also like Kiss of Life from uh, LH Cosmetics. I have that one right here. This is a really, really popular, like, you know, neutral pink lipstick shade. And it's again in that fantastic formula. So it's gonna have that nice, new, uh, that nice like sheer wash to it. The Kiss of Life is very similar to Buff. And then Pink Opal is gonna have a little bit more of that coolness to it. And uh, Dusty Pink is going to be a little bit more matte. But those are like very much like my you know, colors of choice. And I do think that I'm gonna go with pink opal. I'm going to start by lining my lips. I know this is just like a, you know, an every step kind of routine. You're doing every step. You're doing the literal most. Khaki lip liner here, and then just a beautiful neutral brown. Not gonna line my whole lip, just kind of the outside here and kind of define there. And then it's kind of blend in to this color anyway. I would say that Linda Hallberg makes lip colors for me because she and I are complected so similarly. But this is pink opal. And so it's gonna have that nice little bit of coolness to it that I feel like really goes with the rest of the look. It's that, it's just, it's the divine rose color. You know, it's just that pink that has a, just a little bit of like a base note in, in purple. And it looks so at home on my skin. I kind of have to have that little base note of coolness because my skin is so warm. And so it wants to make things turn really pink and I need the little bit of coolness to counterbalance that. So yes, there are places where I could kind of push it right now, you know, if I wanted to do a little bit more blush or something. I will say like the Pat McGrath blushes are, they lend themselves so beautifully to kind of, you know, continuing to apply them. <laughs> you know, like you kinda, it's, it's really, really hard to overdo it with the originals. I am someone who feels like they look the most like themselves when they're wearing a ton of blush. When I, got married, I actually had, I was bright blonde and I had like, you know, the side part with the bangs, I wore my bangs and then, you know, I had the rest kind of pulled up. My hair wasn't very long, but I think now I would do something a little bit more like bohemian because my hair is natural now and long, you know, I would probably do some kind of like braid move or something where, you know, it pulled off my face, but so yeah, all that work and what it does is it ends up just kind of looking natural, but there's so many extra measures taken to make sure that there is not gonna be like a, a moment where you get caught in the wrong like lighting or anything like that. You're just kind of accounting for all the different possible contingencies. And there's, you know, there's, there's work in that. I recommend keeping on hand, and when I say keeping on hand, having someone around who has on hand, your mattifying powder, your lipstick, 
and you know anything else to you know to touch up maybe that Janessa Myers to touch up something like that but the main thing that you're going to want to keep is you know you want to have your lipstick there with you because you're going to want to reapply it especially if you're wearing like a cream it's just not very long wearing the funny part is once it's finally on like I can go about my day like this that doesn't bother me at all it looks dramatic but it's all in really natural colors and so it doesn't really bother me but yeah, I mean, from afar, you're still gonna be able to see you. And also, I would assume you'd be wearing false lashes if you weren't as inept at applying them as I am. So, practice makes better, and I do encourage you, if you do wanna do your own makeup, to practice, but also, like, I empower you to do your own makeup. No one knows your face like you know your face, and no one knows the products that you wanna use and stuff like you do, and honestly, it would've stressed me out so much more to have someone else doing my makeup. I wouldn't have wanted that. So you kind of know in your heart. Let's see if we have any more questions. Is it worth it? And also, why did you choose to marry instead of just staying partnered? I don't really know. Like, I think that I probably, like if I were to do it now, like I said, I, I kind of always wanted to be married. I never really wanted to get married. And I think that it would be the same either way. I was more to appease kind of the traditional side of our family. And there is kind of this excitement that you get swept up in with like a diamond ring and everything. And I wanted it to feel kind of like secure. And I think I would have felt more secure, you know, kind of participating in the traditional way that like the values that like my husband and his family held and stuff like that like it really had more to do with who I was marrying I'm not saying I got pressured into anything in that sense of like actually getting married but I don't know that I would necessarily like if it hadn't been him whether I would feel as I don't know motivated to have actually like gone through all of that it was it was exciting for us you know at the time so like the answer is like is it worth it i don't think so like i don't know i i don't have a wedding album i don't like looking back on pictures from my wedding i like the memories and everything but it's just not it's not my idea of a good time i don't like anybody's wedding i don't like weddings and so you know why would i like my own i left my own wedding early it's just not my idea of fun so like i would ask you like do you enjoy going to weddings because your wedding's going to be a wedding probably <laughs> in most cases it's going to look a lot like other weddings that you've been to unless you have a really good idea of how to do it differently and i probably you know like i said i should have put my foot down harder about the fact that like i don't like weddings. <laughs> I don't want to go to anybody's wedding. That's probably my salty, you know, into my thoughts, but man, I look hot, don't I? Ooh. And that's how you want to feel. That's how, that's how I felt in my wedding day. I did. I absolutely felt like you couldn't catch me at the wrong angle. I was like, take my picture. So those are, those are my closing thoughts. That's how I want you to feel no matter what you choose to do. And I appreciate y'all asking for me to do this video. And it feels nice to kind of have this touch point for y'all to come back to. So if you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up. If you are new here and you reached the end of this video, God bless you, then um, you should consider subscribing because I'm usually long-winded like this and very detailed. And I will stick a video up here that I think you're going to like. And I love y'all so much. And I will happily see you in the next one. Bye.